Well, guys, about another 20 tornadoes in the last 24 hours. The video that I posted yesterday, it was 23 tornadoes in 24 hours. Now we have another 20. This is South Carolina. And uh, South Carolina, Abbeville, they think that it was a tornado. What, what you hear is either tornado or straight line winds. But this guy just driving through uh, a street in Abbeville, look at what is through this house. Can you imagine, can you imagine being in your home and a storm comes pretty much out of nowhere and suddenly you have a really um, big tree that literally just goes through your home? I mean, the top of the roof, like a projectile. Well... He also shows a lot. He shows a lot of the trees down. Yeah, well, let's see. This is in um, Atlanta. This was the scene for this resident. You can even see the tree that toppled on top of their roof. I had a chance to speak with her. She even walked me through why she has some blankets on top of her windows. She says the trees crashed right into her windows, crushing them, and she has no choice now but to obviously work to get that repaired. But I did have a chance to work with the National Weather Service on the ground today, and they told me that any time a natural disaster of this magnitude happens, they have no choice but to trace the path from beginning to end, and this time they allowed me to tag along. Now, we want to get straight to some of that drone video from earlier today. You're looking at some of the damage that obviously this area of South Fulton County was able to endure. Now, Anything in this system's path obviously was going to feel the power. You can see trees on tops of roofs, cars smashed, and construction workers now trying to clean up the mess. The National Weather Service started their survey along Fulton County Industrial Boulevard, where warehouses were evacuated, and the exterior of many buildings were ripped off to gather data before heading into other hard-hit areas. It, it stretched from Texas on up to Maryland. This is in Virginia. Corbin was at a local hardware store buying a stove. Her stove had broke this morning sometime. She was out. Her home took a direct hit. Look at what she have left. It is breathtaking. I'm standing in what used to be her living room. The bricks, the cinder blocks here, her foundation scattered throughout. The debris field goes about a mile and a half that way. It was so powerful, it sucked the septic tank right out of the ground. A tornado came through and wiped up my house. Took the whole house, nothing left. Nada Corbin. <laughs> Thanks God she's alive. All they left is the porch that's on the side of the house, which you can see it right there. The Northumberland County woman was at the store trying to buy a new stove while her house was lifted off its foundation and scattered. Her mattress and part of her roof along with her belongings. Half a mile away. The first call we got was there was an EMS crew just across the field here, and they reported it. And like you said, we had zero warning. We were sending people down different roads to, to see the damage, and actually the uh, first few deputies could see the funnel cloud and get, was giving direction on which way it was going. The tops of trees twisted and splinter. And poles snap from wind pressure. There are most like distribution lines for this area, so there's a significant amount of voltage that's going through there, a significant amount of those 600 uh, members that are out of power. Weather Service folks will survey the damage Tuesday while people on the ground in the northern neck say there's no doubt it was a tornado. We started getting inundated with 911 calls. You know, there's, there's a tornado on the ground. The surprise storm was quick and destructive, cutting a path about a mile long and 125 feet wide. Luckily, no death, no injuries, 
not even a scratch. I believe it. A miracle, Corbin says, and then I saw saying her need for a new stove <laughs> fell in her favor Monday afternoon. Nobody got hurt. Everybody is okay. It's just a house. I get a new house. It's all right. It's time for some new something, something. <laughs> Well, that's a pretty uh, good attitude that woman has. But, excuse me, okay, you go out because you need to buy a new stove. And you come home, and your house is literally, well, gone. But it sucks out the septic tank? Really? Yeah. This is the woman. Neighbors have come to her, um, you know, aid to help her, which I love to see it. Well, yeah, Cheryl, good afternoon to you. I got to say right now, the big thing right here in this Northumberland community is coming together to help up in this cleanup process. Take a look for yourself. You can see many people out here, neighbors, family members, just all chipping in to help as they can. But meanwhile, take a look at the damage. It speaks for itself. You can see how this possible storm just ripped through here yesterday afternoon leaving everything in the site destroyed. You can see the debris all over the place. And as my camera photographer rotates to the left, a house completely lifted and gone. Many of the people I talked to today say they can't believe it. It was the most scariest thing in the world to me. It was an afternoon along Lucetta Road this Northumberland community will never forget. And it wouldn't have turned, I wouldn't have no house here today. Henry Horn recalls the scary moments from Monday afternoon after witnessing a funnel cloud rip through fields and into paths of homes just yards from his front door. Couldn't sleep last night. Didn't sleep last night because of this. This first time I ever seen this, sir. The surprise storm came through without any warning from weather service officials as it cut a path about a mile long and 120 feet wide, twisting trees and knocking power to about 650 people. I mean, when I say it was hot, it was burning burning grass in certain spots. But I, I got to go through this stuff to find my stuff. Meanwhile, for Nita Corbin, her Tuesday morning consists of saving what she can after losing her entire home in a matter of minutes oh while she was at the store. Oh, my God, my house. <laughs> that was my reaction. Okay. And then I said, you know what, it's okay because... God is going to give me something better. Now the cleanup process begins as this community chips in to help, counting their blessings. No one was hurt. And, you know, I need to interject with, you notice how white and black residents here are helping one another? That's how racist our country is. You notice how there's a whole lot of black Americans reporting the news. They're uh, first responders. They're... I cannot believe what we are living. But it's not right. Look at this right-angled cloud right here. And this is a tornado in Texas south of Fort Worth. Really? Really? Now, if you look closely, you can see this moving. This is actually a live shot. But look at how defined this right-angled cut is. It's amazing. It's amazing that meteorologists just never, ever mention the most important aspects of the news. But look at how nicely defined is this squared cloud rectangle. Oh man, and is what, is this another tornado kind of coming out askew? Well, Texas, you had a lot of tornadoes last night, and this is Calhoun City, Mississippi. Um, Livestorms Media cannot play the video, but 
yeah, the damage was quite significant. Man, oh man, what are people going to do? Not so easy for everybody to rebuild, to fix their homes. Not so easy when, well, you have an economy that has been pretty much gutted with a whole lot of people hurting. So, yeah, a whole lot of storms. Look at the size of this tree right onto the house. Well, as you can hear, storms coming out of nowhere. No warning. So, that should tell you that, well, for one thing, it should beg questions. This is Calhoun City as well. Lots of damage. Um that, you know, you, you make a plan so that if anything happens unexpected, you can hopefully dodge the bullet. Yeah, weather used as weapons. Kentucky. I'm going to take you to Tompkinsville, Kentucky, in Monroe County, Kentucky, where reports of damage in and around the city, from downed trees and power lines to homes and businesses damaged by strong winds. News 2's Mary Mays is live in Tompkinsville tonight. Mary, tell us about the damage you are seeing there. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, it happened really quickly this morning. Suddenly all the winds come through and multiple parts of Tompkinsville are damaged, including right behind me. Now we did speak to the National Weather Service in Louisville. They got down here pretty fast to do their assessment. So we talked a little bit about what happened and how they actually make these assessments, how they come up with wind speed and all of the information that Danielle just showed you a little bit earlier. Let's take a listen. Spun up very quickly this morning on a thunderstorm that did not look that strong and then spun up very quickly here and unfortunately hit the, the county seat of Monroe County. Great question. We look at mud spatter and insulation and vegetation and alignment of the trees and the way the trees were damaged. Were they sheared? Were they uprooted and go in different directions? So we look at a lot of things. So from that assessment, we know that this area right here is actually the area that saw those 95 mile per hour winds. And you can see the damage 95 mile per hour winds can do. Look at that very large tree that is currently knocked over and now might going to be firewood for somebody possibly. This is in Nashville, Tennessee.
If you're in it, it's pretty scary. Ellis and Hill uh, counties, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. People across North Texas are cleaning up after last night's powerful storm. At least two tornadoes touched down in North Texas, leaving a wide path of destruction. One of those tornadoes was verified in Blum in Hill County, 50 miles south of Fort Worth. The National Weather Service classified that tornado as an EF2 with estimated winds of 130 miles per hour. Sky 4 captured several homes and structures that appeared to be shredded, many to the ground. The other hard-hit area, likely from a tornado, was in Ellis County, where up to 50 structures are damaged. Fox 4's Shannon Murray has more. Now the storm ripped through Ellis County. This is Highway 77 in Waxahachie near Butler Lane, where crews right now are shutting down the road because of live power lines, which you can see behind us, right in front of this home, which was also damaged in the storm. The Sky 4 video shows mobile homes and trailers ripped apart, trees uprooted in this area. And we also see debris from a nearby junkyard scattered along the road. And we talked to a neighbor who says they heard the hail coming down last night and then their house started shaking and they took cover. And all I could see were these trees just moving like crazy. It just sounded crazy. Then it sounded like it was getting closer and closer. The house started shaking. Then at that point I ran to the room with my kids. Then we waited about five minutes and it seemed like everything died down. Then we came out here and looked and we just saw the tree. The tree had fell and we're just looking around and seeing shingles laying on the floor and everything and it, it was scary. About four miles west, the wind blew three 18-wheelers off I-35. Video shows the semis on their side on the interstate near Forest and Road in Ellis County. The DPS tells us the drivers of those 18-wheelers were taken to the hospital, one with serious injuries. First responders came in to rescue stuck drivers and clear the road, which caused a major traffic backup on the highway. It took hours to clear that highway because those semis were carrying Tic Tac, Nutella, red bell peppers, and cucumbers, which all had to be removed from the road. Reporting in Ellis County, Shannon Murray, Fox 4. Wow. Eight hours, some of the passengers, or, um, you know, just people in their cars driving on <clears throat> I-35 were in their cars for eight hours. This is Atlanta. Almost 10,000 people across the state are without power. Those numbers coming from Georgia Power and Georgia EMC within the past 15 minutes or so. Falling trees and debris, that's a big part of the problem. CBS 46's Haley Mason joins us now live from southwest Atlanta. And that area is still very much in cleanup mode. Rick, we're live inside the Guilford Forest community in southwest Atlanta where trees snapped in the middle and started falling on houses yesterday. You can take a look behind me and see this tree that's shaped like a triangle now snapped at the bottom. That tree is the start of a straight line of trees that damaged homes up and down this street. We're sweeping through my backyard. See this? It looks like a, like almost like a drawbridge coming down. That's our deck floor. Oh, wow. Homeowners in the stately Guilford Forest neighborhood in southwest Atlanta have been hard at work. A tree crashed in and hit her kitchen over there. Each neighbor trying to assess the damage to their homes and get help removing the towering trees that came down in Monday's storms. And all of a sudden, I, I, I heard the big crash, and it was the tree. And I knew that it had been crashed. Because that tree hit, you can hear the, the deck, the steps, everything. Valerie Lewis says she and her husband recently had 13 trees cut down in their yard to avoid possible storm damage. What they couldn't control was this tree crashing into their home from a neighbor's yard. With the, the sound and open your French door and look downstairs to your deck and there's no deck, there's no steps, there's no nothing. It's a lot of damage when you go... When you look at it and you see this house with half of their deck falling down, look like half of their room falling down, and it just looked like it went straight up our backyard. Homeowner Nancy tells me a branch went through her front window as she ran to get her grandson into the basement with her husband. I, I 
shook him and I said, Quentin, we get to run. We get to go. We get to get away from up here. I said, it's a tornado. Today, the neighbors checking in with each other, waiting their turn for roofing and tree cutting teams to make their way down the street, patching up each house and removing debris. Overall, they say they're thankful. I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried about none of this. All I'm glad is I got my life. And you can see right now as the rain continues to come down, there's only one tree cutting service still on this street. It's just too soggy to continue that work. Nonetheless, everyone here, even if they have tarp on their houses, there are still branches on their back decks. They say they're thankful to still have their lives. And for those who leave comments, like funny how these storms always hit you know, the um, lower income neighborhoods. No, no. They hit very affluent neighbors, uh, neighborhoods as well. More than 36,000 people are without power due to severe weather. Yeah, the skies are clear in Roanoke right now, but heavy rain, hail, even strong winds moved through just a few hours ago. In fact, we want to show you this is a live look from Bedford County where a mobile home has been blown off of its foundation. We are working for you to learn more about exactly what happened there. Look at the tree. Mm. And according to Roanoke Fire and EMS, crews are responding to multiple calls about downed trees and power lines. They are asking that you use caution while driving until the debris is cleared. And here is video of that powerful and fast moving system as it moved across Virginia Tech's campus in Blacksburg. We're also monitoring several reports of storm damage. So that was Virginia. More than 36,000 people. It's it, it, Yeah. Power outages. Homes damaged, businesses damaged, trees down. And what do you hear? You hear that these storms are coming out of nowhere. That's how people are not, I, I, I don't understand. Well, at least two people died in storms that swept through the south near Atlanta. Torrential rain and powerful winds toppled trees and power lines. One man was killed when a tree came down on top of this car. I know that his family's devastated. Nobody would ever dream this would happen. And he's going to be so greatly missed, terribly missed. More than a dozen confirmed tornadoes have touched down in the southeast since Sunday. The National Storm Prediction Center says more severe weather is expected in that region again today, including strong winds and hail. How's everybody doing? Wherever you live, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma. Oh, Illinois had a number of tornadoes. Anybody know what's going on? Because I couldn't find any uh, updates. Just, oh, you know, these news clips of, news clips of, well, tornado here, tornado there. This is um, Texas again. Now to the widespread destruction from more than two dozen reported tornadoes across the South. At least two people are dead and many more hurt after two is. days of massive and devastating storms, including the one you see here in Granbury, Texas. Hail and heavy winds knocked out power for thousands. Omar Villafranca reports on a harrowing scene in Waxahachie, Texas. We just saw people screaming, like, get out. Juanita Govia and her family saw this scene while driving on I-35 in Ellis County, Texas. Witnesses, including her uncle and dad, rushed to help before the fire department arrived. I've never seen nothing like this, but it's hard to see. But I'll, somebody needed to do something. They were screaming and they were saying the fire department's about to come, but that was like 30 minutes before the fire department came. Witnesses describe the effort to rescue at least one passenger after a tornado swept across the highway, blowing at least two semi-trucks on their sides. Emergency crews worked overnight to clear the roadway and help people in homes in the area that sustained damage from these twisters in Texas. Holy cow. South Carolina was hit with hailstorms 
and Georgia was left with this trail of debris. Just west of Atlanta, a community is mourning one man who was killed when power lines crashed onto his vehicle. This was the scene about an hour ago. This part of I-35 was a parking lot shut down because of wrecks caused by the storm. Motorists were stuck for eight hours, and when the road finally opened up, people were honking for joy. That road now here at 35 is open behind me. It's clear, but the weather is not. We are expecting more rough weather from Louisiana to Alabama. Don't and wait until I show you what radar and satellite look like. Woman killed after tree crushes mobile home. With more heavy rain on the way, flash flooding is top of mind for many. You can see the rain yesterday made Crock Street nearly impassable. CBS 46's Sabrina Silva is live in South Fulton County where crews are working right now and preparing for the possibility of more severe weather today. Sabrina? Atlanta, Atlanta. Road here in southwest Atlanta. Crews actually just left this area a couple of minutes ago. They were restoring this power line right over here that was affected by this tree that fell down. And this comes at a time as we're expecting another round of severe storms. The rain may be gone for now, but severe weather is creeping up in Metro Atlanta once again. We ask our customers just to keep an eye on the weather as they go out. Um, you know, I've seen quite a bit of flood warnings. On Monday, Metro Atlanta saw one to three inches of rain. Cars seen driving over large bodies of water lingering in the streets, a scene expected once again today. Down trees and wires, also a concern, especially going hand in hand with flooding. On Monday, Georgia Power reported 5,000 customers without power. Most have been restored, but more people could lose power once again as the severe weather continues. Charge up your devices, have your flashlights ready just in case, and have a plan for your family. It's so bizarre how when people are reporting these kinds of disasters, we're leaving so many suffering the consequences of their the disaster that they seem to just smile a lot all right well over 20 tornadoes reported as destructive storms Yet another round of severe weather on Monday with over 20 tornado reports across a large swath of the southeastern US with more in the forecast Destructive storms from Arkansas to Texas, where roofs were torn off, mobile homes and tractor trailers tossed around like toys. This is the damage in North Texas after at least two tornadoes touched down Monday. Search and rescue teams working through the night to pull residents from their homes and get them to safety, at least three people injured. It looks like somewhere between 25 and 50 structures were affected. Uh, we are in the process of doing damage assessments today. The storms turned deadly as strong winds caused this tree to fall on a mobile home in Georgia Monday, a woman inside suffering fatal injuries from the impact. And another round of severe weather in the forecast for the Deep South Tuesday. Areas from Mississippi to Alabama under the U.S. Storm Prediction Center's more elevated moderate risk level, but strong storms possible in surrounding areas too. After that. Well, I want you to watch this woman. She's from the National Weather Service, I believe. Yeah, just letting him fix this up. Yeah. And then I'll do, I know. Say my name, spell it first, all of that, check all audio right. levels. All right. <laughs> all right, everybody ready for sound check and everything? She just keeps smiling as she's talking about these tornadoes. It, it's so bizarre to me. The affect does not, it's, there's such a, well, this is what happens when people are not, they ain't right, as they say in the South, you ain't right. You know, there's imbalance in 
this human being. I don't, I don't understand it. So, yeah, the damage was pretty intense. And, you know, it, it, I can't, oh, China, hell seems to be the thing now. And the intense hailstorms in China. They'll just keep telling you it is climate change. So this was on the 3rd. This was yesterday at 11 a.m. Well, mountain time. So it was approximately 1 p.m. in Texas. Look at the incredible, intense extremely low frequencies being set off in the Gulf and on the coast of Texas. But look at what, yeah, these are nanobots. And somebody at a computer can put in their coordinates, get them activated. But really? So, <laughs> They were literally putting together this storm. Look at the activation. I'm sorry. Uh, th this is not cloud. We didn't have tiny, tiny, tiny little blips of cloud that suddenly appears and then comes together to create massive cloud. Look at how the microwaves, you see the ripples all over. Those are the microwaves. Um, but this is obvious. It is obvious if you've, you know, looked at satellite that it ain't normal at all. Now you have this all of these little, that, that, that look like little beads blinking away. So that was the 11, uh, I mean 11 a.m. on the 3rd yesterday. Okay, so let me just, for some reason, they should be in order, but they're not. So this was at, um, three, well, close to 4 p.m. So you still have the frequencies belting away on the third. And a whole lot of plasma creation. So, so this is what, four hours or five hours later. You still have the nanobots flickering away. And I showed in my video last night this nanobot line that suddenly creates cloud. But this was an earlier take on it from the one that I showed last night. But as you can see, you know, you've got a whole lot of technology involved in our weather. Look at the microwaves and look at these air masses. Just they're colliding, they're whipping around, they're going in different directions. 
and suddenly you have a whole lot of destruction from weather. Well, maybe I did show this last night. Okay. So you can see this is traveling. Uh, it's just kind of traveling in a whole other direction than, than this air mass. And these nanobots, they actually have their own GPSs. They can move where they're instructed to move. So, this is, uh... Size hail was reported in Granbury. Hazard, golf ball size hail and 60 miles per hour wind gusts. Source, trained weather spotters. Impact, people and animals outdoors will be injured. Expect hail... Oh, boy. It's just infuriating. You know, when you do... When you do some research and you find out that man really is controlling weather and you see this kind of destruction, and you see, you know, people dying and houses getting destroyed, it, it is very upsetting. It's just, this was 3 o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep. And look at this huge pulsating frequency in Montana with the extremely low frequencies belting away. But that's a huge, dangerous pulse right there. So, here, look at all of the frequencies. Georgia, border of North Carolina, South Carolina, you know, and what do you have? You've got more of these storms. But they also say they come about fast out of nowhere, and they move so quickly. Well, when man can emit electromagnetic frequencies, then man can move these storms very quickly. So this was... Um, just at just about 3 p.m. today. Three p.m. today. And look, you can see the frequencies even without zooming in. But it's pretty intense. Look at this. Look at these. This is the high frequency signature, the circular pattern, which used to be referred to as harp rings. They're huge, they're intersecting, and they've got the sawtooth frequency. So, what these mainstream media meteorologists are saying about more storms coming, you may have more tornadoes. You know, if you fill the lines out, those circular lines, and then go to the middle of that circle, it could be within 48 hours that you could have a tornado. But with so many so many you know doppler radars in use it's it's tornadoes anywhere on up into tennessee they're huge my god now it's look at this look at this Okay, well, that's not what Mother Nature used to create. So then you have to ask yourself, what is going on there? Why are we seeing such perfect circular lines? Why do we see right angles, 
Why do we see straight lines, defined lines, perfect? Those are the frequencies. So an awful lot of damage once again, and it's, it's just ongoing. It's ongoing. And I hate it. It's really upsetting. <laughs>